When it comes to WCW, Bill Goldberg, he's my guy, okay? You can have a lot of problems with the way that WCW handled a bunch of their booking. I definitely do, but for the most part, when they were running hot, there was one person at the forefront, and he was definitely my guy, and that was Goldberg. During his undefeated streak, the man was booked perfectly. He started off with just, you know, run-of-the-mill squash matches outside of the goofy Steven Regal match where, I don't know, was Steve trying to get himself over? But regardless, eh. Goldberg was kind of learning on the fly. Captured the US title. I th didn't he take it off Raven? I think he took it off Raven. And then in front of 40,000 raving lunatics in the Georgia Dome, peeled the world championship off of Hulk Hogan on a stupid episode of Nitro, but that was also Hogan showing that uh, at least that the executives that were in attendance, oh, I can still draw, brother, and without, without me, dude, Goldberg ain't nothing, pal. The way that he held that belt and him maintaining his popularity even during the dire days of late 99 and 2000. I don't think there was anybody that came out the other side of WCW looking better than Goldberg. Now, as if his original Fed run from 2003 until 2004, uh, less said about that, the better. And it mostly has, you know, something to do with Triple H's reign of terror. But when he came back the second time with his little feud that he had with Brock Lesnar, it was a hell of a good run. Now, of course, the rest of the stuff that he did is just kind of a part-time attraction. Well, no, it wasn't exactly the best for business, but that's neither here nor there. Goldberg, given his, oh, let's just say frosty relationship with the people that are in charge right now and him being a little bit sour about not getting a retirement match, which is so weird. It's like, that's easy money right now. Okay, you want to put somebody over one final time. You want to give a send off to one of the last few Attitude Era Monday Night War stars that you could actually put into a ring and have a limited but albeit spectacular match. You don't want to cash that check. Weird. But okay, instead of doing that, Goldberg's out there on the podcast tour right now, and one that he did recently has been getting a lot of traction. And well, one of the statements that he made, and something that has been synonymous with his career, and well, something you'd think, well, I'm a Canadian after all, and oh my god, I should have nothing but love and admiration for Bret Hart. I'm gonna break some hearts here for a second, pun not intended. I'm not, like, the biggest Bret Hart fan. Like, I, I respect him and all that stuff, and I think my first piece of wrestling memorabilia was a Bret Hart teddy bear with the removable wraparound shades and all that. When it comes to my first piece of actual wrestling memorabilia that I remember, a framed poster, it was of Goldberg. And while a lot of Canadians hold you know, resentment against Bill for throwing the thrust kick that gave Brett one, con or one concussion too many, but if you're going to go ahead and lay all the blame at Goldberg's feet and, well, specific foot in this situation, you're going to have to go ahead and run it back to the doctors at WCW and then also just Brett was working for a long time. He'd had concussions. He had had injuries beforehand. Goldberg was simply the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah, he was a little reckless. Yeah, he was a little bit wild. But that was that was an accident. He didn't mean to do that. I think everybody knows that he didn't mean to end one of the best in-ring careers of all time. And yeah, him finally just coming out and saying, listen, I can only apologize so much to Bret Hart if he's going to continue to harbor resentment, bring it up in every one of his own interviews about how reckless and dangerous Bill Goldberg was try to work everything back around whenever anybody injures anybody and then him just bring up oh bill through the thrust it's like yeah we got it we got it bill goldberg deeply regrets being a factor of the retirement of bret hart but he believes he can only say sorry to the canadian for so long swift kick from goldberg to hart to wcw starcade 1999 resulted in hart suffering a concussion yeah and he's been carrying that grudge for what now going on well the starcade's in november but on 25 years it's like, come on, Brett, let it go. But that wasn't the biggest, or the biggest takeaway from this interview. This interview that, um, well, all the simps are running with. Let's keep it a buck. The podcast in question, Tim Green, nothing left unsaid, had Goldberg address his streak. It's kind of weird the way that he also took this in this direction. I don't necessarily know what led up to this, but Goldberg is really annoyed that some Japanese girl beat his undefeated streak in WWE. Now, that's not necessarily fair. I've seen the clip, and it was more or less just, yeah, okay, what is also synonymous with Goldberg? Well, outside of the context of Bret Hart, it's, yeah, it's the undefeated streak, 161-0, and, and then it was stupidly ended by Kevin Nash, set up the finger poke of doom, and he listened to the way that stupid Kevin Nash wants to go ahead and say, oh, Oh, no, brother, we needed to uh, uh, 
put together a big cabal of heels for the big baby face to run through and it's like oh it just so happened to be you and your friends huh kev god man He's another one of those guys where you just have to go ahead and separate the art from the artist because I really like Kevin Nash. He's just a nut job. But that's basically my opinion of everybody who came up during the new generation era. But anyways, Goldberg was talking about a streak. Talking about, yeah, the fact that it was one of the most lauded streaks in the scripted business of wrestling. But yeah, no, 100%. It's right up there. Maybe not quite as big, and given the fact that it always seemed to just multiply week to week. But it's talked about in the same breath as, like, you know, Undertaker's WrestleMania streak. And we all know how that was basically fumbled, because did Brock really need that? and that's another topic for another time but you take a look at the way that goldberg's undefeated streak was ended did it really benefit anybody so yeah for as much as you can go ahead and script somebody as being this undefeated monster the person who ultimately takes that mantle at the end of the day becomes the one in 160 one and one i think that you'd immediately create a star like that but uh, wcw fumbled or fumbled it wwe fumbled it and the person uh the the some japanese girl who ended the undefeated I'm sorry, topped the undefeated streak of Goldberg, Asuka, who, as critical as I am about women's wrestling, because I don't really think that it's all that good, take a look at what's happening inside the ropes, but I always make one caveat, outside of the Japanese girls, I like Asuka, I think that she's a hell of a good worker, and you take a look at her stuff when she was Kana over in uh, Japan, when she was out there getting bitch slapped by Minoru Suzuki, like, that's a hard chick right there, and she was a freelancer, hell, there were promotions made in order to try to stop her popularity, like, if they were going to make a badass out of somebody i think inadvertently oh they definitely created an unbeatable monster in asuka and she had this big undefeated streak took it into wrestlemania and then tapped out to charlotte flair fantastic stuff did she really need it of course not i just it's so amazing to really take a look at how many you know bag fumbles all of these major uh, companies make it's like you build something up maybe maybe didn't anticipate even doing that to begin with when it came to asuka but you did it you found yourself in a situation and you you pissed it all away good on you but it's what all the wrestling speds on the internet are just all you know, up in arms about it's like why would you be so misogynistic and evil about the bill goldberg isn't too happy these days or with wwe these days mostly because of the piece of shit vince mcmahon broke his promise to give the man a retirement match yeah, yeah exactly i come back for this run and then i sign another contract and then i sign another and then i put some more people over it's like okay can i get a retirement match it's like i came back for you you gave everybody else a retirement match for christ's sakes you don't even want to oh, okay cool all right bet uh that means the gloves are off for now and that doesn't oh, and he doesn't mind taking some shots at the company that paid him mega bucks to wrestle 12 times from 2016 to 2022 and mostly stink up the joint in the process that's not fair that's that's really not fair sure he tried to cripple the undertaker but that was a very very poorly constructed match between two guys that had a combined age well into the triple digits that was poor that was that was a poor idea and poor execution and then he also well he also squashed bray wyatt rest in peace are we ever going to have a conversation about oh yeah how he magically picked up a heart condition in 2021 2022 and then passed away no oh, okay cool great so his family gets to suffer in silence it's so despicable absolutely disgusting but goldberg without any complaints cleanly put over braun Strowman at the empty warehouse wrestlemania like that i don't know what to say stink up the joint not even fair at all okay the first run that he had with brock lesnar was tremendous it was pretty great but this is the quality of wrestling critique that we deal with online uh here he is in the week Oh, oh, here he is this week on Tim Green, nothing left unsaid, being bitter about WWE booking Asuka, or as he pronounces it, Asuka, which, to be fair, mispronounce a name, but okay, if they're going to log or lob accusations of misogyny, might as well throw racism over the top of it, in 2017 to beat his a famous undefeated streak from WCW in 98. Goldberg doesn't think it's a coincidence that Asuka beat his streak after he returned to WWE in late 2016, nor is it a coincidence that every wrestler stole, or stole his signature move. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's really interesting. It's really interesting to think about this. Well, the girl beat my winning streak, beat my undefeated streak. Yeah, can't even remember Asuka is her name, some Japanese girl. And they touted her as being the one to have the longest winning streak. And it just so happened to uh, that it culminated when I got there, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And then they immediately got rid of that, huh? 
strange. Uh, and then it just so happens that every single wrestler uses the spear in their moves, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if you remember, just going back to like 2004 up to 2016, before everything got patched over for a little while, uh, Goldberg's name oh, was verboten. If you were ever reference WCW, any of that stuff. Hell, there was a rumor out there, former UFC commentator Mike Goldberg. Vince was interested in bringing him in for color commentary. I think on SmackDown at the time that Taz was leaving the company or something like that. I think that was the rumor that was out there. But in order to bring him in, they wanted to change his last name. He couldn't use Goldberg because that was a name that was not allowed to be said. Vince is a madman. So yeah, to try to devalue the spear, just giving it away to everybody. Yes, it's an easy maneuver to do, okay? It's really simple for everybody to go ahead and perform safely. You can go ahead and have that critique. I understand. And yes, there were people that used it before and then also contemporaneously with Goldberg. Like, obviously, Edge. He broke out as a single. He was using the spear. Still uses the spear to this day. Rhino. Rhino was using the gore. But I don't think the move is synonymous with anybody more so than Goldberg. That's just my opinion. Uh, Bill thinks, oh, he has always been up against the WWE because Triple H doesn't like him. Well, yeah, you can see the way that he was booked back in 2003 and really draw that conclusion. The fact that I didn't get along with Paul Levesque, which is uh, Vince's son-in-law. Oh, I didn't know. Thanks, Bill. Uh, I think uh, had everything to do with when I got there. Oh, yeah. Uh, going all the way back to his first run in the Fed in 2003. Bill said his tensions with Triple H on Raw was real. I think a lot of that on-screen bad blood between Hunter and myself was real. I uh, wanted to rip his face off. And to be fair, it's like when Goldberg first came into the Fed in 2003... He had a bit of an ego. He has admitted to the fact that he had a bit of an ego. He very much had a backstage tussle with Chris Jericho, like all of that shit. Like we could have another video completely dedicated to Bill in 2003. But that was also right in the middle of the reign of terror of Triple H, where he wouldn't put anybody over and he squashed many a career, specifically Booker T and Rob Van Dam. Could have had two huge stars right there, but no, 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 Triple H trying to establish the big gold belt and he wasn't going to put over anybody except for his good friend or nobody cleanly at least but look at the way that's being covered generally speaking and the way that it's being pushed along goldberg's old colleague seemingly sides with oscar amid controversial comment and let's be completely honest like goldberg understands the business and he's not trying to throw oscar under the bus and to be fair to Asuka, she has more problems with her own booking right now, given the fact that she's, what, like, the fourth most important person in her own stable right now? That's another topic for another time. Former WWE Universal Champion Goldberg recently made a comment about Asuka and her undefeated streak of 914 days. Former colleague of the veteran from his WCW days posted a photo on Twitter seemingly siding with the Empress of Tomorrow. When was the last time she actually used that nickname? But anyways, the man in question was, oh god, X-Pac, one of the most insufferable members. What is with the click and just being completely and totally subsumed with being dickbags 24-7? Uh, I just want to skip ahead to what, yeah, X-Pac had to say. Okay, you still have X-Pac heat with me. Uh, nine-time champion in WWE posted the photo alongside Asuka, the late great Scott Hall, seemingly hinting that he sided with the Japanese star over former WCW World Heavyweight Champion. Because, yeah, that that's what we've devolved into when it comes to WrestleMania season, for Christ's sakes. Goldberg. Goldberg making an offhanded comment that the Fed was trying to bury his career. That's what's popular right now, because it sure as hell isn't the product. Take a look. Okay, when was the last time that you've seen WrestleMania season where week after week the ratings are actually going down? Like, holy crap, the entire business for as much as these stupid journalists want to say, oh, it's a hot business right now. It's like, I don't know, every perceivable metric points in the completely opposite direction. But this is my opinion on this. I'm a big Goldberg guy. I'm a big Oscar guy. I'm not a big click guy, so they can all go straight back to their merch tables to sign a bunch of 8x6s for a bunch of sweaty kids in ECW t-shirts. EU. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.